Hello everybody and welcome to this video where it's Music Monday because that's a thing. And I don't have any music of my own to share with you today because it was so fucking hot that the heat um, fucked the intonation up on my acoustic. So that is going to have to get fixed. So today, as I hinted in my video or stream, I said something about it somewhere, but I said I'm putting together a list of um, my favorite female vocalists. And so I did this and I'm breaking it up into eras because I have to or else the list would be forever, forever long. And these are in really no particular order, but I will have a playlist link down below where you could listen to these songs if you are unfamils because I obviously can't play them on here. Let's look at the list. It was supposed to be a top 10 and I cut it at 14 and I wanted to put more songs from each person on there but I didn't so here we go. So we're going to start off with the original Carter family. Okay, now this might be a little in the weeds for a lot of people because this is some old ass shit, some old ass recordings. But um, Sarah Carter and Maybell Carter, not only did they have this voice that was often replicated for the next like 20 or 30 years. But they were so fucking talented. One played guitar, one played auto harp. Um, one did the rhythms, one did the leads. And um, they, they were just brilliant, brilliant. Um, especially in a time when there wasn't really recorded music for people to listen to and learn from. Like, this is just shit they picked up. And it's, they're great. So, got to give credit where credit's due. Oh, and the song I picked on that, you could have picked fucking any song. Like, I, I'm like, I was, I wanted to put Lulu Walls on there, and I'm like, well, you know, uh, and um, Wildwood Flower just has such a cool melody and such a great like um, little riff in there. So, it, it's just a great song. And then we have, let's see here. Let's just go in order that I have it on here. Um, we have the first major crossover artist from country into pop. And that can be argued, whatever. This is also the biggest jukebox single of all time. So you historians out there will know this right away. And this woman... Also, without her, we would not have a lot of other singers the way we know them, okay? But Patsy Cline, and obviously, this is crazy. Um, and who wrote crazy? Willie Nelson. So, now, now we're all, like, in weird limbo craziness here. And again, I could have put a thousand Patsy Cline songs on here. But, like, her, the tone she has, the range she has, the gruffness that she could throw in there at times. Like, dude, seriously, without Patsy Cline, we would not have tons of people that we have. So, that's that. And speaking of gruffness, and um, just a wild and crazy chick... Wanda Jackson, she does not get enough credit for being, like, just a, a just a thrilling chick. Like, if Patsy Cline is the chick you take home to mom and dad, Wanda Jackson is the chick that you, like, sneak out of your house when Patsy Cline's sleeping to go meet up with at, like, a dirty motel. Wanda Jackson is fucking amazing. 
and um, I actually have a story about her. When a million years ago, when I was selling incense at this uh, place called the Irvine Spectrum in a little outside kiosk cart, Wanda Jackson, a super old Wanda Jackson, was performing at this um, Western bar they had there called the Crazy Horse. She was supposed to, she was like five minutes to stage time and no one could find her. And she was just fucking out drunk, wandering around, um, looking at my incense and just fucking ripped. And um, I'm talking to her and I didn't even realize it was her because I hadn't seen a picture of her that wasn't from like 1950 or 1960. So um, then all of a sudden, all these dudes run up and grab her. And they're like, oh, Miss Jackson. And I knew she was performing. I just didn't put it together because I was working. I was just like, holy shit. Like, I, and um, they took her away. And she was all nice about it. She's like, oh, okay, calm down. I'm getting there. Um, just amazing. And she was the first woman to wear spaghetti straps at the Grand Ole Opry and got told to go home. Wild, wild chick. Okay, next we have Peggy Lee. Not a whole lot to say about Peggy Lee other than the fact that um, I had a hard time choosing between It's a Good Day and Fever. So um, I hope you enjoy the pick and just listen to the other song. Then, 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 then. <sighs> Then we have Etta fucking James. Etta fucking James, dude. Fucking at last. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh. And as good as at last is, I was having a really hard time between that and I'd rather go blind. Maybe I'll just put the other songs in that I like too. Just to like give it some give give it some breath or whatever the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, maybe I'll do that. Um, where are we at? Okay. Um, oh, okay. So here's the, here's the deal, guys. This whole list could have been just doo-wop. Easy. It could have been just doo-wop. Without a doubt. I can listen to women singing doo-wop all fucking day. All fucking day. Okay. But Diana Ross and the Supremes, whatever you think of Diana Ross in the 80s, okay? Like, she took a turn. And then in the 90s, she got even fucking weirder. But Diana Ross, back then with the Supremes, dude, this song, let me see here. Um, Someday We'll Be Together. When this song starts... There's all this, like, some music. It's building up. It's building up. And then the Supremes start singing some shit. When Diana Ross comes in, it's like, shh. Listen up. Shh. Hey, baby. Dude, it is like sex. Okay? Straight, audible sex. When Diana Ross sings this song, dudes in the car with their chick would be like, baby, shh, shut up. <laughs> when Diana Ross starts singing this song, women in the car with their dudes are like, baby, shut up. And everyone would just shut the fuck up and they would listen to the sex. I'm not joking, dude. This song, like, if you just listen to her voice, dude, oh my fucking God, dude. Unreal. Unreal. Look at me. I'm getting all blushy and giggly like a little fucking schoolgirl over here. We're going to hit the Ronettes here because I really, really feel that obviously Phil Spector, the whole thing, Phil Spector, what the fuck ever. But Be My Baby is probably one of the most known doo -y kind of songs there is. So um, you got to give it that. So, the Ronettes. And again, like, they're almost an honorable mention in here. 
but like anytime you're doing any kind of um, list or anything about an era like this and you don't have that song on it, you're done fucked up. So let's just be real here. And now I want to go back to um, talking about some women who if we didn't have them, we wouldn't have other shit. Let's uh, let's just start with Dusty Springfield. Son of a fucking preacher, man. Are you joking? Like, this song is so fucking classic. Everybody fucking knows this song. I'm pretty sure. There was this time when, like, female vocalists, they just had an innocence to them. And then there came a time, and I think it had a lot to do a little bit with Peggy Lee, but in a little bit of Patsy Cline, but basically Wanda Jackson, um, Dusty Springfield, and somebody else I'm going to bring up in a second, really took that innocence and kind of tossed it aside and said, look, like, I'm the fucking shit. Be scared. This is how this shit's going down. And that's, like, super fucking important because you wouldn't have the women of the 70s and 80s and 90s, and even today, if you didn't have these women, like, kind of stepping up and saying, like, and it's not just how they say, or it's not what they, it's, well, it is what they say and how they say, but how they emote, how it comes out, there's a difference. There is, I guess you could call it charisma, but you can hear it, and it's different. And not everyone has this. And you could even tell when someone's forcing it. But some women have this thing. And through this list, as I go through all the decades and everything, this is going to keep coming up. Because this is the difference between someone who can sing and someone who's a star. If you could fucking nail this. And it's not something that you have to practice. It's something you have. And it just is. It's one of those, like, intangible things, you know. But um, Dusty Springfield fucking definitely fucking has that. And then next would be Connie fucking Francis. (laughs) Oh, my fucking God, Connie Francis. Like, this song... And again, like, I could have picked a hundred fucking Connie Francis songs. But this song is like my fucking like where the boys are jesus fucking christ dude so good like i could have done lipstick on your collar like for sure but um she's just got so much fucking attitude she's just amazing just a lot of i love it it's rare okay what else we got um oh okay now barbara lewis um has a few great songs for sure. But the reason why Barbara Lewis is on this list is because I think the first time I, like, not like Puppy Love, but like fell in love with a song, fell in love with a voice singing to me, Barbara Lewis, Baby, I'm Yours. Like, dude, I'm like, Please, Barbara Lewis, please. Like, yes, let's meet Barbara Lewis from 40 years ago. Like, please. Like, um, because, like, I had crushes on, like, and we'll hear about my, like, little kid pop star crushes in future videos. But Baby, I'm Yours, I was like, dude, the first girl who ever sings this song to me, I'm going to just marry him right there. I'm going to get my own um, license to marry people if anyone ever sings that to me. Unprovoked. Um, it's going to happen. And then you know what happened? I'm not going to believe this. Some chick fucking sang that song to me without me fucking saying a word to her. <sighs> Did not work out very well. Um, that was a funny thing. My friends were there when it happened and they knew my weird little fucking thing. And they like lost their shit. They're like, it, um, yeah, so good story, dude. Since we're still kind of in the 60s, um, let's hit uh, 
Nancy Sinatra. Nancy Sinatra is very strange because a lot of people can look at her and say, you know what, like, she's banking off a name and she seems very um, orchestrated. Like, like there's someone behind the scenes kind of thing. But you can't fucking, um, like, shake the songs, dude. And her pipes. Like, you can't, like, cut that shit back. You can't cut it down. So, I mean, obviously, um, these boots are the song everybody knows. Um, what was that song? Something Stupid or something like that. I don't know. But, like, Bang Bang is such an amazing song. So, that's on here. And now we're going to move into the 70s. And this is where I had to start cutting back because I was going crazy. But um, fucking Ike and Tina, dude. Not Ike, but Tina. Tina fucking Turner. Fucking Proud Mary. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Tina Turner could fucking belt. Belt some fucking shit out, dude. So that's there. And then we have... Um, a couple other women who obviously wouldn't be where they were if it weren't for the people before them. And one is Janis Joplin, and one is Grace Slick. Um, Grace Slick is on this list because um, she's just kind of weird, kind of out there, and her voice is so strange compared to everyone else. Janice is on here because Janice don't give a fuck and Janice's voice is all over the fucking place. She's like the first coming of Adele, you know, like Janice, 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 Janice. And there's so many other people I wanted to put on this list. I wanted to put Carol King on this list. I wanted to put Nico on this list. Um, fuck it. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm going to fucking do it. So I'll put those on there. And then for fun, I was going to put Coven on here just to be scary, but um, they're not very good. So anyway, so um, Nico is from the Velvet Underground originally kind of thing. She was on the Banana album and then um, did uh, Chelsea Girl. Such a fucking good album. And her voice is very weird. It's very strange. But once you accept it, Fuck, dude. So good. But these days, like, I can listen to that song over and over and over again. And Carol King, the Tapestry album, if you don't have it, get it, listen to it front to back. It's fucking solid as shit. So anyway, those are my picks. Who did I miss? Who did I leave out? Because I know I left out a million fucking things because... Again, like, this list could have just been doo-wop, and um, that would have been fine, too, with me. So let me know down below, and um, I will see you guys later. And go listen to the playlist, guys. Oh, yeah. And Tato Manifesto, only got a couple left. Los Angeles comes out tomorrow. Only 25 copies. So keep buying my books, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.